Autodesk Maya is an extremely powerful tool and is the literal industry standard for any AAA studio out there. But just because a software is quote unquote industry standard doesn't mean it's easy to use or learn. Keep in mind this software is made for professionals that have thousands of hours in their respective fields. So how are you, as someone with a whopping zero hours in your field, supposed to even get started? Well first things first is you need to have Maya on your machine. Go ahead, click the video in the description if you don't. It's gonna walk you through how to get Maya either for free or for significantly cheaper depending on your use case. So go watch that video, then come back here. Otherwise, go ahead, boot up Maya 2024 and get ready to lock in because this video is going to teach you all of the fundamentals you need to know to get started modeling in Maya. Okay, hopefully you have Maya booted up and step one is going to be creating our project. To do that, go up here where it says new and then literally just click it and... Now in a couple seconds, you will have a project right here, ready to go. Okay, so now you're gonna need to stop everything you are doing right now. The first step to starting a Maya project, and I cannot stress this enough, is to save your project immediately. If you don't save right now, then Maya's not going to do any auto saves or recover your file if it crashes. And it's gonna crash, trust me. All you have to do is go up here where it says file, scroll down to where it says save scene as, and then choose where you want to save it. So we'll just save it to my desktop and we'll just name it YouTube Tutorial. And now you can choose to save it as Maya Binary or Maya ASCII. I, it doesn't really matter too much. ASCII produces a larger file size and it's less prone to corrupt. So I usually go with that. So we'll go ahead and save that there and now we're good to go. Speaking of autosave though, the first time you boot up Maya, you do have to automatically enable it. All you need to do to that is go up to this tab right here that says Windows, go to Settings and Preferences, and then preferences. And then over here where it says files and projects under settings, go ahead, find where it says autosave here, and then click enable. Once you set this up once, it'll work forever as long as you remember to save whenever you enter a new project. So yeah, just click enable and then decide how often you want to do. I like to do three minutes just to be on the safer side and then click save. It's time to do some modeling now. Firstly, this area here in the middle is going to be called your viewport. This is where all of your modeling is going to be. You might have tried to move around in your viewport by clicking and dragging, but it doesn't do anything. So now it's time to discuss navigation in Maya. Firstly, if you want to move your camera around in basically every single scenario, you have to hold down the Alt key on your keyboard. So get used to pressing that Alt key with your thumb. Then if you left click, you're going to be able to turn and move around like this. You, just, you can just kind of swivel around like that. Then to zoom in and out, you can do Alt right click, and then you can move your mouse forwards and backwards to zoom in and out of the model. Or alternatively, and this is what I prefer, is to just use your mouse wheel. It makes a lot more sense to me. And then lastly, if you just want to pan your camera around, you can hold Alt and then push in your middle mouse button, and then you're just kind of able to pan around like this. So yeah, just get used to those modes. You can move around like this, you can pan, and then you can zoom in and out. So try that for yourself and then come back here. Now I know what you're thinking. Where's the cubes? We're getting there, all right? First off, if you don't see these shapes up here in your hotbar, make sure you click this menu and are in modeling mode. And then you are in poly modeling out of these different sub menus. So that's next to surfaces and sculpting. It's in between there is poly modeling. You've got all these different shapes here and you can click on any of them and it'll spawn them right here in the center of your grid. So first off, if you're a little bit misaligned, all you need to do to frame into whatever you have selected is first off, select the object. You can either click on it directly or you can click and drag and then press F. Anytime you select an object and press F, it's going to frame that object in your viewport. And it also changes the point that you revolve around to this object. So whenever you're working on an object, it's usually just a good idea to hit F so you can easily navigate it. Now I bet you're wondering, how do we move this cube around? Well, now it is time to meet your new best friends, W, E, and R. When you select an object and press W, you will see these three different arrows pop up. They represent your X, Y, and Z axes. If you don't know what that means, your X value is basically your side to side, your Y value is your up and down, and your Z value is your forwards and backwards, just three dimensions. You can click and hold any of these arrows to drag your cube on that selected axis and it locks it in place on that axis. But that's not all you can do. If you notice, there's three little squares you can click on as well. What these do is they lock it on two axes at a time. So right here we have our Z axis arrow and our Y axis arrow, and then we have this square in between the two and we can grab that and move the cube around. And now it has it locked in position when I move it on the Z and Y axis at the same time. And then lastly, 
you can click on the square in the middle here, and what that allows you to do is move it freely on any axis. I don't really recommend doing this unless if it's in specific situations though, because it's just not very precise. It's kind of hard to like comprehend three dimensions of movement at one time. Also, the hotkey for undoing, as with most softwares, is just Control Z. So you can move this cube over here and then hit Control Z and it'll go back and then you can keep hitting it and go back through your history and Maya saves everything so you can undo forever. So I know you're ready to get into modeling, but go ahead, pause the video and just get used to moving it around on the different axes, get used to these controls, get used to navigating, framing, undoing, all that stuff we just talked about. Take a second, process it, and then play the video again and we'll get on to the next part. All right, now it's time to unlock our rotation abilities. Go ahead and press E on your keyboard for me. Now this is your rotation. It is very similar to movement with how it's set up. Instead, it's just circles. And what it allows you to do is rotate along your yaw, pitch, and roll. You don't need to know those words really, that's just fancy talk for forwards, backwards, and sideways. But yaw, pitch, and roll is the technical term. So all you need to do is grab one of these circles and then you can move it around on that axis. And then if you want to move along two axes at a time, there's this blue circle around everything and it lets you move based on your camera. It's kind of funky, but it can be useful in some situations. And then lastly, you can click the sphere in the center of all the circles, and you can rotate it however you want that way. And the last thing you need to know about rotation is if you hold down J on your keyboard, and the last thing you need to remember about rotation is if you hold down J on your keyboard, and rotate, it is going to snap it in 15 degree increments. So if you ever need to make a precise 45 degree angle, hold down J and then rotate. Okay, once again, go ahead, pause the video, take a second, and get used to rotating your object and moving your object. Just get used to all these things we're talking about, and then play the video again, and we'll talk about scaling your object. Okay, now it's time for the very last big concept of modeling, which is scaling. Go ahead, press R on your keyboard and it unlocks a very similar menu to what we've been seeing. It's basically the exact same as movement. You have these three things you can click and drag on, and they let you scale your object based on that axis. Along with that, you can click the squares in between the two to scale on two axes at a time, and this square in the center to scale everything at the same time. And now, I want you guys to really take a bit and practice moving, scaling, and rotating, because things change as you rotate. Like right here, you can rotate your object 45 degrees, and then you can go into scale mode, and now you can kind of make this diamond shape, and then you can make it really long, and then you got this cool little pipe looking thing. These are the three fundamentals of modeling, and this is literally what you're gonna be doing 90% of the time. So get these things down now, get your navigation down, and then we'll talk about a couple more things in this video. Okay, so hopefully you guys took a second to figure those things out, and you might have thought, is there a way to make the scale specifically object-based instead of world-based? What I mean by that is can we make it to where when we rotate an object, the up axis stays the same? So in this case, it would be along here if it was object-based versus world-based is what it is right now where it is locked to the whole world. You'll see what I mean in a second. What you wanna do is go to your hotbar on the left here. These are all your main tools and then double click on your scale tool. If you want to change this back and forth between object and world, you can just go to where it says axis orientation and click object. And now it lets you go along the object. And then if you want to switch back to world, you can click world and now it lets you scale along the world. That's a very helpful tool. It's a bit more niche, but I'm sure you'll find it useful. And your guys' version might've started on object mode as well. So if you need to know how to switch to world mode, it's the exact same. Now I'm sure you guys can see the potential of those basic fundamentals, but that's not everything. That's not how you make these super cool models. Every single primitive shape comes with a nice set of tools. To access these, they are going to be on the right of your screen here. You guys might see channel box editor here or modeling toolkit. Go ahead and click attribute editor here on the right. Now every single primitive shape you spawn in is going to come with this little list of things you can do with it called poly, insert shape name here, and then a number. This time it is poly cube one. So here we can go ahead and adjust things such as the width, such as the height. If we really need to get specific, like we know we want it 15 units this way, 10 units this way, five units depth, we can do that here and get really precise with things. Along with that though, we can also add subdivisions. 
This is how we turn a cube into more than just a cube. If you go ahead and drag these sliders here, you can see that there are more subdivisions in this cube now. And you can do this on all axes. So we can do it on the height here, and then we can do it on the depth. This is how you create more geometry and get more polygons. This is one of many ways. But cubes aren't the only things that have this, and different primitive shapes have different tools you can mess with. So you can just go ahead, delete your cube, just backspace or delete, and then let's spawn in a cylinder and see what it can do. If we go into our poly cylinder one, we can see that you can mess with the radius, make it real big here if you want to. You can mess with its height. You can mess with its height baseline. Not something you guys really need to worry about. You can mess with its subdivision height. You can add subdivision caps, and you can make this thing really, really high poly really quick. And then lastly, we'll go ahead and look at the sphere and see what it has. Go into our polysphere one menu, and you can mess with the radius. You can mess with subdivisions to make it more high poly and smooth. Look at that, that is smooth. And yeah, different shapes have different things, so experiment. If you think that there should be a way you can manipulate this shape easier, there probably is. So check that menu. Go ahead, if you wanna pause the video here and spawn in a few more primitive shapes, then go ahead and do that and experiment. Otherwise, we're gonna continue on. Now I know what you're thinking, I'm seeing a whole lot of polygons, but how do I move them around and manipulate them and things? So that's what we're gonna do next is learn how to move individual polygons around. So I'm just gonna spawn in a cube here and give it some subdivisions in our polycube one menu. We'll give it like three on each axis. So now it's kind of like a Rubik's cube here. Also, if you guys want to see your geometry a bit better, up here in this menu, you can click this little icon right here and it'll show you all of your polygons, even when the object isn't selected. It can be useful sometimes. I just figured I'd let you know. But now I'm going to blow your mind. Go ahead, select your object and hold down right click. Maya has a very efficient hotbar. When you hold down right click, that brings up a bunch of different tools based on the context you're currently in. Right now, since we have a shape selected, we're able to go into different modes to manipulate each individual polygon. There's a bunch you can do here, but the main things that you're going to be messing with is object mode, which is what you're in by default, meaning when you click on something, it selects the entire object. There is face mode, have your object selected, hold right click, hover over face, and release and now you'll be in face mode. You can see you can select the individual faces here. There is edge mode, which lets you select individual edges. And then there is vertex mode, which lets you get all the way down to the individual vertices of the object. And the best part is with all of these, your move, scale, and rotate tools all still work the exact same. Let's go ahead and start in face mode. So right click your object and then hover over face and release. And let's go ahead and select this polygon right in the center here. Press F to frame your camera and watch this press w to be in movement mode you can move this thing around just like that move it left and right however you want and experiment same thing goes for scaling we can grab it and scale it up and we can scale it down and we can scale it inverted and then we can make it real small and then we can rotate it and we're now changing the geometry of the shape this is how you make things you take the individual pieces and you warp them and you crunch them together and then eventually you got Fortnite. Also, if you wanna click multiple faces at a time while you're in face mode, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can just click and drag and then it will select anything in that radius. You can hold down tab and then just click and drag and it'll select any faces that you put your cursor over. Same thing goes for deselecting. Once you have faces selected, you can hold tab, drag over them to deselect them. Or you can just click out here if you wanna deselect everything. And then lastly, you can always just go the good old fashioned, click one and then shift click and then shift click, and then shift click, and then shift click. Now, if you wanna get more precise than face mode, we can go ahead and move on into edge mode. Go ahead, right click, put your mouse over edge, and then you can grab each individual edge of the object. Once again, your W, E, and R work the exact same as move, scale, and rotate, and you are able to grab these different edges and move them out and make whatever you want. Now, look at that, we have a bird, that's beautiful. Let's go ahead, we can grab this, we can scale it up, we can scale it down, we can move it, we can rotate it, make it real, really, really morphed. And then for ultimate precision, you can go into vertex mode the exact same way, hovering, releasing, and then you see all these little purple points. That's where all of your intersections are and you can move those individually. So we can click on one, hit F, 
in order to frame ourselves and then move this thing out and get a nice sharp point here. And you can select multiple vertices at a time if you want to. Select this one here, this one here. Oh yes. Now, as you can see, we made a beautiful model here. I'm basically AAA ready. I hope that wasn't too much. That was a pretty big chunk right there. Please pause right here. Take your shape, take everything we've learned and try and make something. It can be ugly. Don't make something intricate. Make like that stupid bird or something I showed you a minute ago. Once you feel a little bit comfortable using these tools and that you're not having to like refer back previously in the video, we can go ahead and move on to the next section. You should give yourself a pat on the back. That is basically how you model. Everything else is just fancy little shortcuts to make things go significantly faster. But now you know the fundamentals of modeling. Don't be scared. Things get easier. Get comfortable with those controls. And let's go ahead and talk about something a little bit easier. You might run into situations where you really need to get a nice front view, side view, side view, top view, but maybe you really need to be locked in that position. Well, do one thing for me. Have your mouse here in your viewport and press spacebar. Oh my gosh, you have four viewports now. These three viewports are locked in place. You can work from all of these four at the same time. You have one for your Y axis, one for your front axis, and one for your side axis. These are orthographic views, meaning they don't take perspective into consideration. They literally take a perfect image of what's in front of them. Now working from four different viewports at a time is very overwhelming, so what you can do to go back into one single viewport is hover your mouse over the viewport and then press spacebar. Then to go back out, press spacebar. To go back to your perspective, press spacebar. Just use your spacebar and it'll take you to all these different views. Now that we've let some of that previous knowledge settle in your brain, we're going to tackle one pretty important but not quite as intensive topic, and that is going to be snapping. What is snapping? That's where you can take your object and click it into specific spots. You'll see here in a second. So we have our cube here, and let's say we only want it to move perfectly along this grid. We want this little pivot point to go from this square to this square to this square. What we can do is meet our brand new best friends, X, C, and V. These are our main three different snap modes, and they are grid snap, line snap, and vertex snap. So if you go ahead and hold down X on your keyboard, you are now in grid snap mode. When you move your object around, it is going to move perfectly along this grid. The main other important one is going to be vertex mode, and that is going to snap to any vertex. So this works in object mode. So if we go ahead and spawn in another cube here, we know that there is a vertice on this cube at every single corner. So if I take this cube and I want to snap its pivot to the corner of this cube, I can grab this cube, I can press V, grab this cube, and then drag it over, and now I can only snap to the vertices of this other cube. And since this cube over here has more vertices than this cube, it's going to allow me more spots to snap onto it. I'll make this a little smaller to show it off better, but that's basically what it does. And this also works in like your vertex mode. I can grab this vertice and I can snap it along different vertices on different shapes. And that's for all the snapping modes. And real quick while we're on the topic of snapping, if you want to change your grid size to change how your grid snap works, you can just go ahead to this little checkerboard up here at the top of your viewport, right click on it, hit grid options. It'll pull up this menu here and you can change the length and width of your grid and how frequently grid lines are. So if you know you want a 1000 centimeter project and grid lines every 100 centimeters, you can do that there. Click apply and now I have a 1000 centimeter canvas with grid snaps every 100 centimeters. There's a lot you can do with snapping and grids and everything. We'll talk more about that in the future, which is exactly why I'm currently developing an in-depth modeling for games course. If that series has started, it'll be right here for you to watch. It is going to teach you the whole process continuing from where we just were in this video, taking you from a complete beginner to having your first modular toolkit ready to go into a game engine. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.